In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the Lord Jesus give you his peace. We'll celebrate today the feast of St. Juliana Falconieri. She was a niece of one of the founders of the Servite Order, an order with seven founders that is devoted especially to our Sorrowful Mother. And the opening collect that we pray today it refers to a miracle that occurred at St. Juliana's death. And what happened was that she was extremely, she was in her death agony and she was vomiting quite a bit. And consequently, she was not able to take viaticum. So she begged the priest, please just lay the corporal here on my breast and place the host on it. And the priest succeeded to this request. And shortly afterward, the host disappeared and Juliana expired, and the image of a cross such as been on the host was found on her breast. And immediately after this, she was honored as a saint. And she's usually uh, pictured as such with the habit of her order, which is the third order of the Servite. She was the foundress of that order uh, with a host upon her breast. And so it gives us pause to reflect today on the mystery of our Lord and the, the Holy Eucharist, our call to become what we eat, his body, blood, soul, and divinity, and this mystery of transubstantiation that by which we get our Lord, but also by which we are called to become. And so, meditating on this, Pope Benedict Emeritus gives us uh, some, some good uh, food for meditation. He says that death in itself is something of a transubstantiation, and the, the paragraph in the Catechism gets to this a little bit. When it talks about viaticum, it will talk about the sacrament of our Lord once died and now risen. And even at the Holy Mass, of course, with the separation uh, of the, uh, the bread and the wine, the two species representing the death of our Lord. Of course, there's no blood in the body, and of course, the person is dead. And so the sacramental significance of that is profound, and also the reality of our risen Lord truly present. So what we have here is the bridge over death, or the medicine of immortality uh, that we're participating in, which is, a, uh, of course, the gift of gifts. Okay, so uh, this death itself is also, uh, according to Pope Benedict, as Cardinal Ratzker, he has this, uh, at the Last Supper, which anticipates the resurrection, we come to the certainty that love is stronger than death. This is his whole take that the Last Supper anticipates uh, and is the currency, so to speak, or is the very value of what happens on Good Friday. And that act, which is an obedience to the Father's will and an act of love, conquers death. That's a very important concept to kind of grasp because what we're getting into when we communicate with our Lord in the Holy Eucharist is we're entering into that very act of oblation, and we're participating in that act of obedience unto death, and he's giving us of himself in that way. We're being taken up into it. And uh, Pope Benedict goes on to add, this act of love to the last is the transubst transubstantiation of the death, its radical transformation, the power of the resurrection already present in the shadow of death. Now, this is something that, if you've ministered to the dying, uh, we come to realize in a very tangible way that uh, a person in a state of grace who has uh, been pursuing uh, a life of holiness uh, becomes something of sacraments. In other words, becomes something of the bridge to Christ for others. And this, of course, our whole life should be this way, but it comes into special significance at the approach of the division of soul and body, which is death. And that brings us to another reflection as well, which, again, Pope Benedict will talk about, he says that in the liturgical reform, it's his belief that one thing that has been ignored is the communion of suffering. That is to say, the mystical body of Christ, that in the poor, in the hungry, in the downtrodden, those who have no hope, however it plays out, that that communion is the liturgy of our life that we bring to this Holy Mass as well. The two can't be separated. We can't do all kinds of fancy things liturgically and then ignore the table of the Lord in the world. A very important point because we have focused so much on the liturgy. And so the transubstation of the death by this act of love is meant to be, of course, ite, ite misa est, is spilled out throughout the whole world. 
Okay, so let's go back to St. Giuliana Falconieri, who uh, became, at the moment of her death, apparently, the host. In other words, the, the, the host was, of course, uh, imprinted with, uh, with the cross, and then that cross was imprinted on the very breast or the heart of uh, St. Giuliana. And it gets at the mystery of what's happening there, because, of course, when we communicate, we get, we're taken up into a higher order. Even the species, again, relying a lot on Pope Benedict, even the species, they're converted. The substance of the bread is converted. This is the language of the church. The substance of the bread is converted uh, to the substance of the, the body of our Lord, and the substance of the, the wine is completely converted, uh, body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. In communicating, we get taken up into a higher reality, and just the, the miracle of St. Juliana in our last moments points to that. Now, as Franciscans of the Immaculate, we've been called to image in a particular way through St. Maximilian's theology and also through Father Manelli, this transubstantiation into the Immaculate because it's a, not a no-brainer, but it is just a very concrete fact that the human nature of the Christ, which he gave up, came from, it's an entirety, from the Immaculate Virgin Mary. And so entering into that, also entails a transubstantiation into the Immaculate. So just looking at some of the steps of the Christ, and if you think of Jesus saying at the Last Supper, uh, my body which is given up for you, in a similar way we can think of the Immaculate Virgin Mary saying, uh, my heart which is given up for you, because the subjective participation of the redemption, uh, all the interior consequences of sin rage through our heart. Consequently, we consecrate ourselves to Our Lady, just as St. Paul would preach the cross of Christ, so too we must pre preach the cross of the interior cross of Christ and the graces that that wins for souls. So looking at the passion of our Lord, uh, we have you know, the, the bare bones fact that oftentimes the, the divine will will appear to us as something as repugnant. And to be aware of that fact, and because that, that's the initial portal, it's the initial door to walk through in an act of faith and the obedience of faith, not my will but thine be done. We also have Jesus being tried and condemned, which on the interior level we meditate upon being the subject of others' criticisms, others' judgments, and how would we comport ourselves in that? Should we not, like the apostles, rejoice at suffering not only scourges, but the interior scourgings of these things? It's a high, exalted invitation to participate in this way and the silence that's involved in that, um, the being scourged, the cr being crowned with thorns, the different humiliations, and lastly, the, the, the unvesting of the Christ at the cross where we have the outer garment which is being divested of temporal goods, and the inner garment, which would be the divesting of spiritual goods. What are we saying here? That the kenosis, that justification comes about through the emptying out of faith, through the emptying out of hope, through the emptying out of charity, to the point where Jesus could say on the cross, on our behalf, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? And so those things are the sleep of the death of the cross, which have a fecundity. They have a fruitfulness for souls. And so this is the interior cross of the Immaculate that we are called to embrace. A very, very high call, but also one that's very, very necessary. And it revolves around our Lord and the Blessed Sacrament. And even the martyrs, will point, St. Paul himself will point to it, that martyrdom itself is this point of becoming, of a point of transubstantiation. You know, I rejoice. Even the fact that I'm being poured out for you already as a libation Libation is a sacrificial offering. That's liturgical language he's using. St. Ignatius of Antioch, right? Becoming bread to be ground by the teeth of beasts. So these are things that work out on the interior level primarily. Primarily, then if God so desires the invitation, you know, well done, good and faithful servant, and then even perhaps a red martyrdom. But we focus on this because in consecrated life, this is what we're called to. So may St. Juliana, who she was, again, after her death, she was immediately recognized as a saint because of this prerogative of being like uh, Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament.